Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. First repair of the year. I've got an Acer E5475 here, which does not turn on. Um, so when we plug it in, we do get a light on the front. Oh, other side. We do get a light on the front, which starts off orange and then momentarily changes to blue because the battery is charged. There you go, there it goes blue. However, if I press the power button, we get no power on light at all. It seems to be stone dead. So let's have a look at this and see if we can make it turn on. So I'm not really sure what to expect with this. This is a laptop I've seen before. I believe I've put an SSD in this thing in its lifetime. So we'll take the back covers off and we'll have a look. The customer said they have already tried taking the battery out. Now I'm not sure what they mean by that because as you can see this thing has an integrated battery. I don't know if they tried putting a, um, uh, a pin into that hole there to disconnect the battery um, or whether they meant that they literally removed the covers. I'll be quite impressed if they did but who knows. Anyway, I'm going to take the covers off and take a look. Right, so we've disconnected the battery. I'm looking for looking for suspicious marks, signs of liquid damage and stuff like that. Not seeing any major smoking guns right now. Um, I think I'm going to dig a bit deeper. So while the battery is disconnected, I think I'm just going to take the, log the motherboard out and inspect it and just make sure that we don't see anything horrifying on the other side because there's not much going on inside this laptop. It's quite a simple device, so it should be fairly easy just to take this apart further and just look for any anything obvious that we can do while we wait for the power to drain. Aha! We do have a BIOS battery on this thing. I don't think it will be the BIOS battery, but we'll check. Is that a tiny bit of... There's a tiny smudge there. That almost looks like there might have been a little bit of in liquid ingress from somewhere, but... I don't think that's enough to really be a smoking gun, to be honest. That might just be some dust and grime that's just gotten into the laptop over time. So I'm not going to read into that, I don't think. There's some partial protection here. Uh, fine. All right. Um, I'm not going to take out the BIOS battery yet. I'm just going to connect everything back up, connect the battery up and see if it starts. And uh, if that doesn't work, then we'll take the BIOS battery out. But we'll just see if um, the battery disconnect did it first. Okay, charger in. Not giving us any lights on the front, but the battery's not connected, so I wouldn't expect that. And power button. Power button does nothing. Okay. BIOS reset then. I'll leave that for five minutes. That should do it. Last battery in. I don't think I'm going to get this lucky. Okay. And power button. No, it doesn't seem to be responding to that either. Okay. Let's rearrange this. Right, so the first thing I want to know is, is this board ready to turn on? Um, there's power stuff on the other side. This is CPU V-Core. 
Uh, I'm going to get the board out because I think all the power stuff was on the other side. I want to check that we've got 5.5 uh, and 3, sorry, 5 and 3.3 .3 volts. Just check that those initial rails are there. Because if we're missing our standby rails, then obviously there's a problem. Eh. Yeah, so there's the uh, 3 and 5.5 .5 volt regulator. Oh, 5 and 3.3 .3 volt regulators. And I need the DC jack, so let's get this guy out. Right, so with power on the board, I'm going to look around the secondary power supplies. So I'm looking for inductors like these guys, also known as coils. And we're going to see if there's power at any of them. There we go. There's 5.2 5 volts there. So that's our 5 volt rail. 3.4. So that's our 3.3 .3 volt rail. So the rails are up. They're a little bit hot, but that's fine. I'd rather they be a little bit too high. Nothing at this guy, whatever that guy is. However, the battery connector... Oh, battery connector's up here. So, what are you? That could be our 1-volt rail. No, it's too big to be a 1-volt rail, or it might be. Hmm. Okay, so on the other side of the board here, that's where our memory goes. So this guy is probably memory power. It looks like the trace of that is coming out along there into this plane here. So that's uh, memory v-core, that guy there. Okay. So we don't expect that to be on because uh, the laptop is in standby, uh, or rather it's in S5. So, uh, okay. Well, we've got our rails then, so why don't we turn on? Um... What I what I want to know next is if the power button is actually working. Now the problem is the power button is integrated into the keyboard. So how do we try and tell this thing to turn on without uh, without a replacement keyboard? So I'm going to see if I've got a schematic for this um, to see if we can get a pin out for that keyboard connector. Pulling up a schematic for this motherboard, we can go to the page with the keyboard connector on it, and then we can see that down the bottom of the keyboard connector, we've got a couple of ground pins, and then pin 27 carries the on signal. So this signal will go to the power button, and when it's pulled to ground, that signals the laptop to turn on. Okay, there's our 3.3 volts at the power button, and let's just try shorting that down to ground next to it. Ah, and it powered up. We have a blue light. The fan span and then stopped spinning. However, we have a blue light and the fan twitched again. Okay, the light has gone out. There we go, it's power cycled and it's twitched again. Okay, we have something. So I think we've got a bad keyboard here. It's just really difficult to tell because we don't have a physical power button. So, right. Is that warming up? It's hard to tell. The The blue light is on again. Right, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this fitted back into the laptop so we've got a screen connected and stuff like that. And I'll try manually jump-starting it again. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we're in the laptop and we're plugged in. And once again, I'm going to stab some tweezers between pin 27 and 28, which is power on and ground. So we're going to pull that power on signal down to ground to tell the laptop to turn on. Here we go. I've left the keyboard disconnected just so that can't interfere with anything if the keyboard is indeed faulty. There we go. There's our blue light. And let's see if we get a picture on the screen. There we go. No bootable device. Lovely. Right, so uh, I'm going to unplug this one more time. And now we'll plug the keyboard in. And we'll just confirm that the keyboard is not able to turn on the laptop. And it looks like this is just as simple as a bad keyboard, um, which is going to be a pain because I'll tell you why in a minute. Right, plugged in again and keyboard power button, press, press, nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right, and just for funsies, 
I'll try pressing that while I'm probing uh, that keyboard connector. We can just see if this signal is actually pulling down or not. Which it probably isn't. Right, so there's our 3.2 volts. And press. So I'm holding down the power button and as you can see that signal isn't dipping. So the power button is not doing anything. It's not pulling that signal down to ground. So there we go. New keyboard needed. So the reason why this keyboard is a pain to replace is that it is heat staked. So you see all these black dots. Those are heat stakes, which is a plastic post sticking up through the keyboard that has then been melted down to hold it in place. And so we'd have to rip all of this off and rip out all those heat stakes, put the new keyboard in, and then try and melt down those heat stakes again as best we can. It's absolutely doable, it's just labour intensive and you don't really get a great finish from it unless there's some kind of master uh, strategy that I'm not aware of. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find a replacement top cover or the entire top case uh, because for this key this laptop is common as muck so it's entirely possible I can get a whole new top cover for not a huge amount of money. Perhaps not a lot extra than the actual keyboard is. Um, and then we can just replace the whole thing. So I'll see what I can find and I'll get back to you. And just like that, we're back with spare parts from eBay. So um, there were separate keyboards and um, palm rests available on eBay. Um, however, as discussed, I, have, I bought the whole palm rest. Now, um, in terms of making a profit on a repair, this was not the sensible option. Well, that depends. Let me get to that, actually. A keyboard on its own was something like £20, and I think I just paid something like £45 for this entire top case. Now, that basically annihilates any profit that I can reasonably make on this job, because I'm going to charge low for this. However, uh, at the stage we're at, uh, because these keyboards are such a pain in the ass to replace, I would rather make a paltry 10 or 15 quid on the job and have this done in the next 10 minutes than I would to spend an hour painstakingly reheat staking a new keyboard in order to make, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 pounds tops. Um, so because also, and you might say sort of, oh, that's just being lazy and oh, you could have made more money there. And it's just like, yes, or I could be done in 10 minutes and move on to an easier job that doesn't suck. I have no shortage of that. So obviously, if you've got, if you have unlimited time and you've got nothing else to be working on, then you might want to take the harder repair to get some more money out of it. However, if like me, you have plenty of work on the go and really making more money is more about optimizing which repairs you do, probably better off taking the easy option and just doing a cheap ass job. So in this case, I bought this replacement uh, palm rest. This one is not used one. However, it's in really good condition. It's in better condition than the one that's on there is. Got exactly the same stickers and logos on it. And the back is in perfect nick as well. All the screw holes are intact and it's already pre-fitted with a trackpad and the spare USB port and stuff. So literally all I've got to do is drop the display assembly and the motherboard into here and just rebuild the laptop. If we didn't have the trackpad, we've got five screws on the bottom of that and then this trackpad would come out as well and we could swap in the one from the existing palm rest. However, as things happen, we've got something that's in absolutely mint condition here. So I'm gonna disassemble the laptop fully and we're gonna rebuild it on our new palm rest. So let's get to work on that. Uh, I'm just gonna go into fast forward for this because it's just an assembly job now.
before I zap in all the screws, we're just going to actually make sure it turns on just to save me some trouble. Power button. Oh no, are you kidding me? What do you mean it wasn't the keyboard? Hang on a sec, let's just plug in a charger just in case it's sulking. Okay, we've got a charge light on the front. And now we've got a power light, that's fine, it needed the charger. God, I was, I was, I was ready to get salty then. I would have been furious if it hadn't been the keyboard. Good, and there's our Windows loading spinner. Good, I'm gonna let this start up, then I'll shut it down again and we'll zap in the screws. Perfect, and because I know you guys love to see a clean laptop, let's get the cloth. Glass cleaner. Microfiber cloth. Grain of the cloth lengthways. Multi-surface furniture polish. And there we have it, all nice and clean and shiny. Uh, so I need to sign in and set the date and time on the laptop because that's incorrect, but otherwise we're all finished there. So thanks for watching everyone. Um, that's a lesson on how uh, stop designing keyboards with power buttons on the keyboards. It's a really dumb idea, whatever. Uh, my support links are in the description down below for my Twitter, my Patreon, and my Discord server. Or failing that, hang around for the end card. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.